Today we tested the hearing of this uh, stranded dolphin to find out whether or not she had sufficient hearing to be released back into the wild. Uh, we use auditory vocal potential methods, uh, which is a, a method that was developed uh, many years ago, but uh, made portable uh, by the National Marine Mammal Foundation and the Navy Marine Mammal Program. Um, we effectively measure small voltages produced by the brain when an animal hears a sound. But sadly, in this case, uh, the hearing test showed that there were uh, no voltages produced when we played the loudest sounds. So, in effect, uh, this animal uh, has a severe hearing deficit. Well, if we test a stranded animal and it has a severe hearing deficit or you know, is a effectively deaf, they can't echolocate. Um, these animals must echolocate in the wild to be able to catch food. Uh, so this animal would be considered non-releasable based upon the fact that it is unable to echolocate due to the deafness. Now, the rough-toothed dolphins uh, are probably the species where we see the highest prevalence of, of hearing deficits. Um, of the number of animals we've tested over the years, all of them have had severe hearing deficits except one. Well, we, we've been doing this now for almost 20 years, uh, and we actually learned a lot about um, hearing in these uh, dolphins and porpoises. Over that time, we know that they have age-related hearing loss. We know that there are other things that can cause hearing loss, noise exposure, disease. Um, what's going on with this particular species, we don't know, but we continue to accumulate information um, as these animals become available. Uh, and hopefully over time we'll, we'll come up with the, the proper method of trying to figure out exactly why it is these animals are losing their hearing. And in particularly a lot of these young animals that are showing up that look like they've recently been weaned. But at the moment it's just speculation as to what the cause is.